I've went and watched these things in their natural habitat. There was hundreds of these things just all over the place. They'll be patient and wait for a fish and they were successfully hunting. So we're going to take this whole thing two feet deep. We have an aerator sitting here, allowing the water to be agitated just enough for the heron to not see it. The purpose of this pond was to make this thing heron proof. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. Hey everybody, it's Brian with Team Aquascape. It is a gorgeous day, so different than last week. It's amazing how the weather just like changes your attitude. And when it's sunny like this, you're not even paying attention to the cold. Last week, lots and lots of obstacles. We had uh, three inches of snow. We planned on spending two days just removing soil and getting soil out of here. And the reason we've spent six days doing that is because our dingo went down. Then we brought another dingo out here. That dingo went down. Then we had to go rent a dingo. All of this stuff takes time and there's no way we can make up that or charge the customer for all of these different things going on. We even had two Azuzus planned on being out here. We only have one because the other one's in the shop. We thought we'd have two today. We only have one. So challenge after challenge after challenge, but with the great weather, things are happening. I'm gonna show you where we're at because we're so close to putting the liner in. A lot of our excavation done. Uh, started digging this stuff out. There's gonna be a little landing pad right here. Uh, we're running into some elevation challenges, but I think I've got them all figured out. We're gonna do one step down here. That brings us down six inches. Water level from the top of the patio will be about five inches lower than that. So 11 inches lower than that step. So this, I've excavated this down. This gives us enough room for base material plus our brick that sits on top of it got this at the same level as that this is going to have a unilock wall on it so you've seen us do this hundreds of times we're going to use engineered brick all the way through here you're hardly going to see it only about four inches of it is going to be above water level then my patio will cantilever out over it the same thing is going to happen along this side in through here patio cantilever it bridge going from here to here now this patio over here, the whole idea is just big enough for two chairs and that's it. They definitely don't need more seating areas, right? I think, I think they've got that covered. They really just need a fish feeding rock. From water level, we're taking everything straight down two feet. The entire pond is gonna go two feet minimum, three feet in some other sections. The reason we're doing that is to make this thing heron proof. Now I've went and watched these things in their natural habitat and it was over by kind of a rookery over there and there's hundreds of these things just all over the place. Herons will almost 99% of the time land on dry land, then creep in to about six to eight to 10 to 12, sometimes even going as far as 18 inches um, they really don't like going deeper than that they're hardly ever gonna stand in two feet of water they're definitely not standing in three feet of water when they start getting into that deep water it's really hard for their wings to get out it's harder for them to jump up out of the water so we're gonna take this whole thing two feet deep we're also gonna add lots of aeration lots of moving water distorting that water so the heron can't see through the water in some of those even two foot deep areas is it a hundred percent gonna work Mm, maybe not. Here's what I know. Herons were around way before Aquascape was, and they were successfully hunting in 100 acre, 1,000 acre, 10,000 acre lakes. Mother Nature also gave them the blessing of being patient, and, uh, and they'll be patient and wait for a fish. In fact, I've seen them patiently wait on this small pond out over here. And so that pond's definitely deeper than two feet, definitely deeper than three feet, and, uh, and they grab fish successfully out of this thing. The idea is if I can make it hard for them, very difficult, they won't go over there. They'll come back over here where they've got a lot more shoreline to explore and hopefully a little bit more success. Welcome 
Well, sun is shining. It is a new week. We are out here in Inverness, still working out on our big granite pond that we're building. We are hauling more dirt out of here. I know Brian and I were out here for the last two days, pulling truckloads of dirt out of here. You can see behind me, we have our setup there. We have our dingo and we are just making a track back and forth. Brian's making a big pile. I'm scooping with the dingo, dumping it in our trucks. And then we have to drive it all the way down to St. Charles where our shop's at and dumping it there. So fortunately enough today, we have our dump trailer. So it should go a little bit quicker and we should be able to get a little bit more dirt out of here per truckload. So it should make things a little bit quicker. We're almost done digging the pond out. And today we need to get the fabric and liner in. So wish us luck and see, see how today goes. So you can see we got our fabric in. Shh, do not tell Brian, but Brian thought that we were gonna get this fabric and liner in tomorrow. But the sun is going down and there's still a little bit of sunlight left and I am determined to get this fabric and liner in today because that was our goal and I'm sticking to our goal. It was a good day today. We got our hole excavated, got the soil out of here and we were gonna get our fabric and liner. Well, it is a start of a new day. We were able to get our fabric and liner in yesterday. Our goal uh, this morning is to get all our boulders set and then I know Brian's picking up our material for right there. So hopefully by the time he gets here, we can get that rocked in and then we can focus on um, getting our efforts on getting that uh, side of that wall done because we have to do a little bit of fabbing up with some uh, material and everything. So that's gonna take a little bit of time, but it's gonna turn out awesome. It's always the last 10% and that is gonna really look really cool, especially um, coming off that step and looking straight down into that water. I think it's gonna be our main focus up until launch and then after launch either we're gonna um, shift our focus to the walls and get our base course set or we're going to start getting our skimmer and our pump vault and our kind of our intake area all set up and uh, get everything dug out for all that fun stuff so should be a good day i know it's finally um we're making good progress and after we kind of got out of our stream area i know that was super tight in, uh, in area so it kind of slowed a lot of things down but now since we're into the into the pond area we should be able to cruise right along on rocking this pond in. We're getting ready to set some wall stone in here and to keep with this really clean look that they've got going on everywhere else We're trying to kind of integrate that modern contemporary feel in with our rustic feel like with the boulders and everything else down in here So we're gonna do wall stone right up in here We're scratching our heads trying to figure out how we were gonna bring the pond right to this edge because they've got this long stair that comes down here um, I want to force everybody that comes into this backyard to use this bridge to get out to the gate. And just doing boulders up this wall was going to look a little weird. If I continued the wall stone this way and then that way, that 12 inch thick wall stone was going to need a cap. And the next stair was going to look weird because I couldn't find this Israeli and limestone anywhere. So what we chose to do is just do a vertical, really thin wall right here. So we're just using New York Bluestone and we're gonna go straight up this wall. So we put our bib liner down just to protect the original liner here. Then on top of that, you can see we've got some uh, crushed stone. It's called the uh, CA-16, I believe. It's clean, it doesn't have the fines in it. The reason we choose the stuff without the fines is we don't want any of that stuff migrating back out this way. We're putting that stuff down as a base so we can use it to level off the height of our stone. Uh, this trench was about eight inches deep, which gives us a lot of play when setting the stone. So we're gonna come in here, level this off, set our elevation, get that stone in there, and then we're gonna mortar this whole thing in so that stuff doesn't wanna move back and forth, back and forth. But we'll take you on this little journey. It'll be fun. Tell them it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs>
right, there we go. So we've got an angle iron down at the bottom. Up and hold that, we'll get in here, get a little bit more mortar. But we got a good four inches of mortar. So these stones go down into about four inches of mortar. The angle iron is then anchored into the mortar and then holding that back. We have a little gap back behind there. We're gonna fill that with some more and uh, and then we'll get a, we're gonna run an aeration hose back in through here because we want to put an aerator here and over there off in the corners just to kind of push water out of this area so that those bubbles will come up the wall and then push this way and push this way over to our skimmer cove over in there. Um, this will also help distort the water a lot so the heron can't see through in this corner and this corner but we're going to leave the center open so if they're feeding fish from over in here we can do that. And so now Jack's working on the base for our wall stone that's going to go in here we'll start getting that set and then that new york blue stone the irregular new york blue stone is going to hang over and then we'll have a fun time over in this corner where we kind of bring wall stone right into the bottom of this which helps anchor that in some more and then probably carve in a couple big granite pieces up in here just as a nice transition jack we're having fun today huh it's a good day it's, it's a good snowing. day it's not snowing we're building ponds for heck's sake That's a decent amount of work for a day's worth of work out here for us. We uh, came out here and we busted some butt. First thing this morning was to get our bottom rocked in. We got the bottom rocked in. And by the time we got that rocked in, Brian showed up with our four pieces of bluestone. We got all that done after uh, before lunch. And then after lunch, we got all of these walls set. So we got this wall set. You could tell that we're on our third course here. And then over here, that's the one that I was working on over here. We got that set. So both of these, the groundwork has done. And then when we come out here tomorrow, when Z grabs some more wall block, we're going to be able to cruise on these walls get these done out of the way and then it'll be smooth sailing all the way to the finish line on rock on this pond end so stay tuned and see wow am i really pleased with how the progress went today we knocked it out of the park for it being the three of us and with the rain this morning so when we came out here this morning we only had this to this uh course done and we had the base course set on that rock just right there so we came in here today we got this wall done we got the cuts around um, this boulder here, and there's another boulder over there. Chris did a phenomenal job on cutting around that. We even got our base material in for our uh, bluestone patio that's gonna go over here. We came over here, we got that rock set as well over there, so that's all done. Those cuts are made. We are up to our final height here, and then we even got our rock in right here. We're kind of waiting to see. I don't know if we're gonna do a peninsula here or if we're gonna do or if we're gonna do a, a fire uh, spill bowl, but that'll be a surprise for later for you guys and then we even got our first layer of rocks in down here so we uh we got to come in here tomorrow we got to backfill all this and then kind of run up this way with a bunch of granite kind of uh, framing our waterfalls that are going to be coming into the pond but we did a really good job hopefully uh tomorrow we can make really good progress and we could uh finish up this area here and then uh possibly get our skimmer in our uh, vault area in that's a pretty good look so this isn't really an intake bay it's more of a skimmer box with another vault for the pump a lot of times when i'm using two bigger pumps and i've got two nine pls on here i don't want to try to squeeze two nine pls into one skimmer box so i always do the vault next to it and it didn't really justify and i didn't have the space to do like a full-on intake bay but i still wanted to get some aqua blocks in just to keep this thing from getting clogged up with debris what's nice is where the boot sits this little spot right down in here with an aqua block on top comes in just underneath our skimmer opening which is perfect so it's almost like a built-in shelf 
right in front of the skimmer. The thing I wanted to pay attention to though was making sure that this vault was far enough away from the opening of the skimmer with the idea that I could get a rock that sits right in here that hides the skimmer and then another rock in here. If this sat too close over into here, there's no way I could hide this and this without coming out in front of this too much. You want all your pumps in one area so all the debris from the entire pond pulls from different areas, pulls from here, pulls from over here, and then get sucked into one spot. When you have pumps sitting in two different spots here and maybe over here, debris on the surface of the water gets confused on where it's supposed to go because you have opposing forces. Debris wanting to go this way and this way. So often you actually create stagnant areas. So all your pumps should always sit together in one area. Now that we've got this situated, it's up to Jack and I to figure out how to disguise this best. So we're gonna come in down below here and just start kind of piecing some rock together making sure all of this gets hidden because if we see all this infrastructure stuff it's going to look horrible especially from the main viewing area over here Uh, getting close to finishing this job up today. I know we probably won't finish 100%, but we're hoping to get this thing running. So the only thing we have left to do is to get our seam in, get all that done, and then we're gonna start placing these urns. We have two large urns and one medium urn. So we're gonna kind of play with the heights, see where we like them, what we don't like, and then kind of go from there. We're gonna get those in, get those rocked, placed, leveled, plumbed, lights in, and then we're gonna kind of go through with our rock work, kind of disguise all the liner, hide that liner, and then hopefully we can get the edges done as well. And yeah, go from there. I know. Uh, uh, we'll probably have to come back and finish some uh, detail work, but the main focus today is get this thing up and running for the homeowners. Well, we got everything up and running. We got the stream and the sphere running. We got the bowl running and we got the most important thing running, the urns. That was our biggest thing. Coming out here today was finishing that area up and getting it all dialed in. Unfortunately, this pond isn't 100% done and that is the patio guys are coming out here and they're gonna be finishing up the patios, but I'll show you guys as soon as I flip this camera around and show you what I mean by that. The aerators are turned on and it looks incredible. I'm super happy with how everything looks. The whole purpose of this pond was to make this thing heron proof because we are right up against a big retention pond that herons always like to frequent. So we wanted to make sure that this thing was bomb proof and that the heron was not going to be attracted to this thing any way possible. So we came in here, we added those aerators. We made this thing two feet deep at the shallowest around our shelves and this pond's a little over three feet deep and it looks incredible. I'm really happy on how it looks. I know I said that earlier, but I'm just super excited. It's so nice to work with granite. We've been working with big moss rock all season long and we finally were able to use granite on a full granite pond. So let me spin you guys around and show you what we got going on. So we came in here and we installed our wetland filter, which our snorkel sits right here. And then our centipede runs just right through the middle of this area with our obviously our aqua blocks and then our different layers of gravel sitting on top of those aqua blocks. And you can't even tell that that's where our filter is. And that is the powerhouse filtering this pond. But I just love how the different tones that you get from being in different areas of the pond. We have this awesome seating area. I mean, look at that pergola. It is absolutely massive, but it's so nice to hear that bird loving sphere. I say it's bird loving because see, there's super low agitation off the top and the birds are gonna flock to that. Get a drink of water, kind of enjoy themselves, take a nice little bath and then if, if they want a little bit of deeper water and go swimming, they can come down here because this is probably a good six to eight inches deep of water. But as we continue on, we're gonna go down to that bull area and you guys can really hear the difference on the uh, noise difference between up here and down there. So we came in here, we stripped out all that grass and we went to town on putting in a nice 45 foot long granite stream, which is a super low profile and super cool stream. I love how it just twists and turns all throughout here. 
I cannot wait for them to get a bunch of aquatics and ground covers all along here to kind of soften up these edges so you don't see all this rock. I cannot wait to see that those plants kind of creep over the edges of the rocks and really disguise this to its fullest potential. My bad about the extension cords kind of laying around. The electrician is coming out sometime this week to get our uh, power drawn out here from the box. So we have just our two extension cords running everything for right now, and these will be out of the way probably in the next two, uh, day or two. But as I, as I was saying about the noise difference, you can tell we have water. We can we can hear the waterfall that's behind that rock there, this Beverly Brook, this bowl here. And then of course those urns. So there's a lot of sound down here and you can really hear everything coming back this way. Like I said, I really love the sound that we can hear throughout the different areas. As I said earlier, we have two aerators and that was the sole purpose of adding those aerators was to make this hot and hair improve, which we did. We have an aerator sitting here and there and that's allowing the water to be agitated just enough for the hair to not see it. So we have great agitation and movement all in this area here. We have great movement along the waterfalls there, right by the bowl and then over by our stream area over there. As you can tell, those are the areas that it's only two feet deep, which the heron most likely will not go in but we just wanted to play it safe and make sure that the heron could not see into those shallower areas. This whole deep section here, which you guys can faintly see, is all three plus feet deep. So the heron will not go down that deep and congregate with the fish and try to grab those fish. But moving on, let's go into the specs of this pond. So right now you can see we have our big wall that we love to do in all of our ponds uh, as of recently. We got one there, we got another one here, and these two walls are going to support our bluestone patio that this cedar bridge is going to connect. So we have a small little area for two chairs and an end table to sit all the way over there, and then this is just more of a landing coming off the steps that I'm currently standing on right now to get you closer to the pond and then to the other side of the pond as well. So going back to what I was saying earlier about our urns and what we were doing earlier, originally when we first showed up, we were gonna do a biofall just kind of sitting kind of right where that big uh, pink rock is at with a small little waterfall dumping into the pond. And by talking with the homeowner and with Brian and I talking, we were kind of not leaning towards the biofalls because you really couldn't see it from the house. I mean, look at how far away that biofalls would have been from the house. And unfortunately this pillar was right in the way no matter where we would have put it. And so we wanted to come in and we gave the homeowner another option and that was the urns so he really liked the urns because we can get nice and high without getting a berm and i think we made a really good decision out here we have a large one here which has all the components in it and then we have this guy here we actually took the bottom half of the urn and we dropped that guy down and then we have right here is a medium stack slate urn and we plumbed all those up we have a three watt light sitting in all these on top of the three of these urns and the goal is when they get it, when they get some landscaping and some trees back behind these urns to kind of hide that house back there, the um, tree is going to get nice and big and those lights are going to be dancing and giving a shimmering effect up on that tree. So we got that done. We got a small little meandering stream coming into the pond, which is super minimal. These waterfalls are to be seen from that patio over there. And the thing is I love about this pond is that you can't see the pond from one area. And I know Brian loves to do that in all his consultations and all his designs. And this thing is really nice. Guys may be wondering where has Brian been he is actually out of state doing a consultation getting stuff ready for us next year which he left us to kind of wrap up this project button it all up we're gonna be up in South Beloit working on that giant project that Chris and Ed have been working on for a little while now so I'm gonna looking forward to seeing what we got going on up there please everyone why don't you guys comment down below and tell me what you guys or what your favorite uh, section of the project is there are so many cool areas we got the sphere we got the urns we got the fire spill bowl we got all the walls the bridge you guys tell me down in the comment section because I'm really curious to see what everyone's thoughts are on everything please everyone like comment and subscribe it is Jack with Team Aquascape signing out.